I often think of those reckless debauched nights as I pathetically clasped to a flask of Jack Daniels and a picture of you, Norma. I see your eyes in the awkward glance of a child, raging, burning, a flame like Middle Eastern oil fields at dusk, and I think of how we spooned, of how your hot breath hit the back of my neck as though it were the sweltering, unforgiving North African winds touching down on Andalusia. Your unmistakable laughter erupts from the flutter of wings and the rustling of leaves as a flock of birds takes flight from an arboreal refuge to another. I feel the contours of your form as I submerge myself at night in the abysmally deep baptismal waters of my tub, but I cannot cleanse myself of you, and the forced catharsis only leads to a labyrinthine introspective re-examination of two years which might as well have been the sum total of my existence, a silent montage of Norma. The first time I saw you, you were cutting through the smoky room like a razor cuts through the purest, fluffiest snow-white cocaine. You were like an angel descending from a celestial perch, a harbinger of joy being heralded by the most emotive of fanfares. And I felt a rapturous unsteadiness as I forced a large crown of broccoli, liberally dipped in goat cheese and calamata olive hummus down my throat. Oh, I was fortunate that night to have been hovering above the vegetable dish for you accosted me, inquiring about the quality of the brie, to which I suggested the utterly divine artichoke dip instead. Who would have thought that a casual confabulation over the merits and shortcomings of the snack table could lead to a conclave in the coat room? I can still envisage the way that your milky skin seemed to glow even in the dark recesses of that coat room, and how it was impossible to determine where the white fur coat you draped over yourself originated and where your skin ended. You kind, gracious soul. Oh, how you magnanimously forgave me, endlessly, whether it was for infringements against your dipshit of a father, getting drunk on Thanksgiving, commenting on how, despite your mother's age and hot-headed temperament, the white dress she was wearing was still quite arousing and delicious. Oh, how I led you into temptation, oh, how I delivered you to evil. The insatiable sucking from a bottle, a bottle which harbored sea monkeys possessed by the uh, devil, who only took life once inside of me, and grew and grew, until I was a sea monkey possessed by the devil myself, unknowingly abandoning volition, a free agent no more. My thoughtless words causing tears to suddenly sprout from your eyes, those eyes like burning oil fields at dusk. I see your comely face at dawn, I feel your benevolent embrace at dusk, and I feel your resplendent beauty throughout the endless night. Nothing can bring you back as you are always here, a never-present essence to my being. Cogito de Normis ergo sum, I think of Norma, therefore I am. Therefore. I am mutually blessed and plagued, for I can see you in my mind's eye, but I can never feel what I see. I can reach out for you in desperation, but my arms will only swing lifelessly through the cold ether. I can attempt to wipe the tears from your eyes, but the mascara only runs until your eyes resemble two bullet holes dripping with scarlet red plasma. Oh, I can try to rewrite history with my wayward imagination, but my heart will always fact check the final draft. But I am blessed. Blessed because I know that you were always near. Blessed because for every tear I made you shed, I also aroused laughter from the most profound depths of your soul. For every night of angry, pointless back and forth, there was a night of cheer and jollity. So Norma, I take this drink and I cheers to you. Because I can never say goodbye to you. Or if I wish to see you again, all I have to do is wait for the lights to go out so I can lay my head to rest and close my eyes to dream. Hello, Norma. Goodbye.